Brandon's making a sick reel for the 3DMJ Instagram about how we added we added subtitles to the lifting library videos because some of our non-native English speaking audience members said that that was helpful, right? So we're just gonna drop a little reel to acknowledge like thanks for the feedback. We have started and are going to continue working on it. Brandon gave me this, whoa, this script that he wants me to read. And here's his fancy setup. Can you see? I think so. Wow, that's a lot, but yeah, that works. No, it's cool. It's whatever. Also, look at my Mickey shirt from my Disney trip. I just want to show you all that. Okay, ready? Test. Keep going. Test, test, I am testing, I am testing. As a highly requested feature, all of the Lifting Library tutorials now have the option to watch with closed captions enabled. If you're looking for a specific term, just type the word in the top search bar and navigate those results. We're rolling out with English first and more languages would be... Sorry about that. requested an unboxing video of the leotards that we ordered for a competition season. So I have my phone right here and this is for them because today as I'm recording this, it's Saturday and I don't see them at practice until Monday and everyone's freaking out because we ordered these so long ago, like in November, I think. The company is Sylvia P and they're based in Australia. I'll show you guys on the screen right now what the leotard looks like on the model. Her name is Olivia, she's an actual elite gymnast. We might not look exactly the same <laughs> in ours, but that's what we ordered, we think it's beautiful. And because we're allowed to, because we're adults, we're gonna wear that Leo with black shorts over it to compete in, and our competition is literally one week away, so we cut it super close with ordering. But they're all custom made, and they're from Australia, and so this is how long it took. And here we go, this is so tiny, this has three adult women's uniforms <laughs> in them and three scrunchies because in gymnastics you have to have the scrunchie that matches otherwise like what are we doing so anyways i'm actually going to be talking to my friends not you guys but it's just gonna go okay friends they're here here are leotards oh shit they're like individually packaged if i'll just open mine then so y'all can stay safe you see they're like oh our little scrunchies i don't want to oh <gasps> Look, y'all, I don't want to open yours. This is dope. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna open mine then. Here we go. <gasps> y'all, I think it looks great. I think it's exactly what we asked for. Mine does look kind of big, but again, I know we all talked about how I'd rather have that than small. It feels nice. Yeah, I think it's good. This is as blonde as I want it, so I don't have to do like my whole head like I've been doing the last couple times. We're just gonna get this little stripe down the middle because I can't wait too long in between root touch-ups. Otherwise, I'll get weird banding is what she calls it. So you have to handle this stuff every six to eight weeks so that as it grows, it's always blending out. Because if I let it grow down to here or some shit, then it would look like chunky and you'd see like levels in it or something. Or so I hear, that's what the professionals tell me. Anyways, let's go get our roots done. God. 
guys, she added a toner and look at this color. Like the iciness of it all is so dope. Like a little light purple silver situation. I'm obsessed. I didn't even mean for it to change like this, but like I'm so happy it did. What a surprise. What a delightful surprise. making YouTube videos for like three or four months now. And it is incredible to me how many videos in which I have declared something and how quickly that is no longer the case. And I'm fine with that, but I'd like to catch all up on all this shit that I didn't lie to you about, but have changed my mind about. In order to keep track of it, cause I'm like keeping this list in my head and thinking about it, I'm actually going through my videos since I started at the end of October, November, December, January, February, yeah. And we're just gonna go through it. Some is very quick, some is very big, and I'm gonna let you know. First off, my competition is this weekend, and I changed the competition season already. So I told you guys, I was like, I'm gonna do like six to eight meets, and the last one's gonna be nationals, and I'm gonna do level six and then level seven. Change my mind about it. I do not want to spend a grand or two on a big trip to Milwaukee because that's where Nationals is. Literally just because who wants to go to Milwaukee? No offense if you're from Milwaukee, but like if Nationals was in New York City or Denver or LA or like some place that I have either not been to and it seems exciting or could tie in a vacation with Brandon or if I was feeling good enough to do like level eight and I'm training a whole lot more hours and it's really, gymnastics has become something that I can freely train without being so limited by my body sometimes, I would do it. But to simply do these sort of easy routines in a city that I sort of don't wanna go to is actually something I decided against. And I don't think any of you guys give a fuck who's listening to this, but I did feel really bad because I told my friends that I was gonna do it and a couple of them kind of wanted to do it too and like we were all excited we were going together but I just like generally in my bones do not want to go. Not like, well I mean I could go, it's like, no that sounds like it sucks. Again, no offense to anyone but it would just, like I would rather spend that money on a real vacation or on literally a lot of other things. Like I always think about how every decision is not just that decision. Every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else, right? So it's not that nationals itself isn't worth it, but it's like, would I rather spend a thousand dollars doing level six or seven in a city I don't really like, or on any other literal myriad of things that I would enjoy more like physical goods or a straight vacation without a competition attached to it. Who knows, but I decided against it. So I'm staying in Texas and doing three meets. Tomorrow here in Austin, a month later in Houston, and three or four weeks later in College Station. And that'll be it, and I'm happy with that. And while that's true and honest and what I want to do, I did have problems making that decision literally only for other people. I thought my friends wanted me to go to nationals and they would be disappointed. I thought I wanted to train a lot harder and try to go level eight. I always have to keep reminding myself that this sport is for me. I'm not a kid anymore. I don't have coaches that assign this season for me. And the friends I have now genuinely just want me to be happy and not stressed out by this thing I'm supposed to enjoy. And it's wild. It's wild how hard that is for me to accept. And I always have to remind myself of those things, but nobody hates me for the decisions I'm making. There's literally no pressure. There shouldn't be any pressure. And the sport should be an addition to my life, not a stressful thing. So I changed my mind about it. And that's what we're doing now, these next couple months. Next video was a about my hair. I dyed it super duper light so I could start putting pastel colors in it. I just kind of fucking like it blonde, so I want to stay like this for a while. Not a big change, just thought I would keep you updated on it. Then we're gonna hang in this family probably till at least the end of competition season because I don't feel like putting in the time to use colored conditioners right now. That's all. Oh, and a few videos later I talked about my housing situation and I was like giving you a journey of how I went from apartment to house to apartment to blah blah blah. We're actually moving in like two months. And this kind of combines with a very recent video where I told you guys that one of my goals for the year was to find an office space outside of the outside of this apartment. And it turns out that was a lot fucking harder than I thought. So Brandon and I, this still stands true, really like the apartment complex we're in. We really like this part of town. It's still in Austin, Austin, but kind of in the direction where gymnastics and trampoline is actually kind of far outside of Austin in this little area called Cedar Park. So there's like downtown where we live, Cedar Park, which is a great location for us. 
it's a brand new complex which we love it's in a really fun part of town where they're building a lot of stuff we like the amenities here and within like the block around us like the little like the retail around us and college around us it's all real cool but like i said since we both work at home this particular apartment is feeling a little bit squished sometimes as i'm sitting in brandon's office right now as i told you on that video my office has been in the living room and when we moved here a year ago brandon was freelancing was out of the house a lot more but now he works primarily with 3dmj so we work together he has an office and he needs with his photography videography music he very much needs this space and since we moved here I also started making videos and I feel like I would like a space to make videos because like I said I just locked myself in this room while he's out in the living room to make this to you guys. So I thought I wanted an office space outside of the apartment because this is the biggest two bedroom that they have in this complex. But they do have three bedrooms and we have been asking ever since we moved in here if we could have one of those but they have been occupied the whole time. There's hundreds of apartments in this complex and there are two, literally only two three bedroom units and they've been occupied until like a week ago we found out that there was an opening and we snatched that shit up. So now I don't have to look for an office space outside of the house because I'm gonna have a bedroom that will be my office and so we'll be doing that in the like two months, eight weeks, some shit like that. So that kind of takes care of the other big goal that I had for you besides therapy, which I have started and I'm gonna fill out in a very, in an upcoming video or two. But that's another thing, gymnastic season, hair, living situation. I thought I was gonna make up a whole new floor routine, but then it season came on too quick and now I'm using the same shit I used last time. I'm a little bit sad that I couldn't pick out a royalty free song so that when I showed you guys my floor routine on YouTube, you could hear the music as well because the music I have right now is is from a Dua Lipa DJ mix <laughs> and I'm pretty sure it's illegal to play for y'all but I'll try in the next video and like maybe that's it yeah I still don't want to coach I still oh no I also we also changed our minds about a big thing with 3dmj we were gonna add some live streams to our video course membership but we actually decided to hold off on that and maybe do it on YouTube later we have never talked about that on this channel but that's also in my job that's actually a really big change we don't have to talk about that here but I think what I'm getting at is there has been a whole lot of shit that has changed in the past month of my life and it feels fast but it feels better I feel unclogged if that makes sense when too many things go unchanged I feel stuck I feel bored I don't feel like I'm making progress and if I don't feel like I'm making progress I think I get depressed I have to feel like I'm moving forward on something and now because my biggest fear is being stuck my biggest fear is settling my biggest fear is being a person that doesn't evolve. And nine times out of 10, when I am stuck, it's because I'm scared to change, usually because of other people's expectations. I said I would stick with this, so I better stick with it and see it through. I sign the lease, so you have to stay, and then I get pissed when that happens. I told my friends or family or colleague I was gonna do something, but I actually don't wanna stick it out, and I have to see it through, and it makes me antsy. So like, I'm always trying to balance, like, are you keeping your commitments, or are you stuck? Because there, there is a very big difference, and usually it comes out in like tears for me. Like if I'm frustrated, I cry, and if I'm crying, I'm mad, and something needs to change. Like my body knows, like whatever this thing is, we reject it and we do that through tears. I think that's a thing, for real, I'm not even kidding. If I'm crying, it means I need to do something about something. And that's how the whole thing where I was like, I need to get an office outside of the house, doesn't matter how much it costs, but I am feeling cramped because it's making me crazy. And as I'm telling Brandon I need to get out, I started crying and he's like, okay, yeah, we gotta get you out. But then like miraculously that other three bedroom opened up. The same with therapy. It was like, I was crying about this certain thing. Like every time I would talk about it, like four weeks in a row, I was like, oh my God, this is it. This is the time that I actually need to start therapy. With the 3DMJ guys, with the big thing that we changed, like we'd spent four months planning on doing, again, these lives within our course platform. And I just was procrastinating. I was putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And then I finally told the guys at our big team meeting, I think I just generally, gen genuinely don't want to go this route. And Jeff Alberts, of course he's the godfather. The eldest of the 3DMJers was like, like heard me and he's like, it's, you're making all these points for the reasons you don't want to do this thing and he's like you can literally just say you don't want to do this because you're the one that would have to lead it and if you don't want to do it we don't do it and i'm like oh what a relief you know so it's just funny right you grow up and you think there's an end goal you think that oh of course i'm gonna grow up find the husband have the kids get the job and find this house and it's all gonna work and then when i have everything i need it's like bliss 
but actually bliss is like for me anyways is like are you pushing forward are you changing frequently enough to take these little baby steps into this life you want and then there's like these fucking you know like bumpers on a bowling alley where you're like oh no went too far that way no went too far this way well but it's always like kind of going like this in the same direction you know and if i get stuck which i don't know how to make that part of the bowling analogy i didn't throw it hard enough i don't know if i get stuck against a gutter or some shit because i don't have my bumpers up. i just have to have my bumpers up maybe that's the analogy you have to keep your bumpers up aka like listen to your emotional responses to keep you bouncing off shit and going forward because if your bumpers are down you'll get stuck in the gutter and it takes so much energy to get out oh my god i just made such a good analogy that is what i was trying to say this whole time that change is good as long as you're not chaotic about it or changing too many fucking things at the same time Ooh, or when they come when you're not expecting it that sucks too when like when you're forced to change but in general i think it's healthy and it makes me happy and the gutter's not a place that i want to be anyway since i have my meat tomorrow i'm gonna shut up and uh try to get this video out before then thanks for hanging out see y'all in the next video